take your crimson red and we're going to work a little bit going backwards, back up the hill here. And you can even go over that pale vermilion a little bit just to brighten it up. Oops. And then we'll use this also to go over top of the other side here where we have that wall there. That's looking nice. We are going to deepen this color a little bit in here. So grab your black and let's start the trek down. It's pretty dark in here. So um, this area is more of a gray tone than it is the black. So we're actually going to, let's see, follow the heel up this way. Okay, and then you want to leave, leave that. You don't want to, we don't want to color it just yet because we're going to do it with the gray so that it looks like a shiny black and not, because like when you're doing black, the shines are mostly gray. You might get blue. Um, sometimes it's green, but in this one it's gray. So we'll go over top of it and you'll see. And sometimes you go through these phases, almost all times actually, you'll go through these phases where it kind of looks ugly, like you're just not sure um, if you're doing it right or, you know, if it's just going to be ugly, if you're <laughs> doing something wrong, I don't know. But um, a lot of times it just needs more work. Um, I've had plenty of pieces where I'm working on it and... I'm looking at it going, oh my gosh, like I know I can do better, um, but I've already been working on it several hours and it's like, oh, I hate to throw it away. I hate to give up. I mean, I've only had, I think there's two pieces out of last year. I think I did like 40, 46 pieces. And I think out of those 46, I threw away maybe two. So, and started over. Um, after several hours being into it. So, I mean, there is a time and place for that, but a lot of times it's just, you need more work. Um, so don't totally give up. A lot of times it's nice to ask somebody like a mentor or a friend, you know, Hey, I, something's wrong with this. Can you help me figure this out? And a lot of times people are willing to help. I mean, I know a lot of the groups that I follow, if you ask for some criticism, um, people are usually always willing to give criticism. Um, I mean, sometimes it can be pretty harsh. I've had some harsh ones too, but you know, a lot of times if you just get past the harshness, I mean, there's no excuse for being harsh about it, but a lot of times if you just get past that, you can understand a little bit better what they're trying to get at. Crimson red here, but yeah, I mean, sometimes harsh criticism can be helpful. It's not always the prettiest, uh, but sometimes it might be necessary. Um, I've had some harsh criticism, like I said, but um, don't always count it as being not helpful, I guess. But I mean, I know it's nice to hear that, you know, you're doing a good job, but sometimes it's just like, well, something's off and I think you might need to do this or that. So don't take it too much to heart. If someone genuinely wants to help you, it might, it might hurt a little. Okay, now in this area, if you zoom in in the picture, you see a lot of different colors. So what I want you to do, we're going to do some peach in here. Okay, just to take out some of this graininess and keep it light. 
and I'm going to come back through with um, maybe my Tuscan red or, or I might just even go straight to like a brown <clears throat> let's see uh, maybe some terracotta terracotta might do the job um, if it doesn't we'll switch it to the dark umber so in this area the it looks like the leather piece is kind of um, like they're kind of like going this way there's a lot of different strokes in there so I kind of just um, you can go back and forth and just create a little bit of some color variation here we're not going to outline each piece of these folds or these textures so I'm just kind of polka dotting almost and just adding a little bit of some texture so see that's not a whole lot of texture but I'm going to come back through let's get out you got to be careful with prismas they're so soft this one looks like it was damaged in production see there's like a, a big crack it goes all the way through sometimes this doesn't hurt the pencil but um, sometimes it does you might get like there might be micro fractures in here and then when you go to sharpen it the whole tip comes off so that is pretty common for prismacolors unfortunately but I'm just letting you know okay so all these little um, shapes that you drew go above them and put in a little spot of this light peach okay so basically we're just creating what looks like a texture we're just kind of playing around with the lighting here and then I am going to go back through with some dark umber which my pencil is getting super tiny and I sharpened it up and I'm going to look for the ones that I already did and I'm going to go through very lightly and just create these shadowed pieces for like this leather so just go through and you're gonna add little bits of shadow here just to make it look like there's texture and then we'll come back through I think with some white just to give it even more of a difference in value just that nice sharp contrast so on top of those just add little bits of white and it's not going to be like super bright I mean it's it's really very subtle but there you go there is some of that texture in there okay so now that we have that we're going to continue now with this shine that we had earlier with our um, yellow ochre and pink So continue your pink. I'm going to go up this way with it. I'm going to use our small circles. Oh, we forgot to do some pink in here, huh? There. Glad I caught that. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. I remember I actually just recently went to go get a piece framed uh, for a client and the framer shop has art supplies thankfully but I was in there and the lighting is so much different than the lighting that I have at home and I was sitting there looking at it and I'm going oh my goodness like I think I totally missed this area like I, I totally missed it and the framers looking at me his name is Daryl He's looking at me and I'm like, do you mind if I grab a pencil? <laughs> he was totally nice about it. I, and I bought the pencil too. I was like, I'll buy it since I used it. I mean, I'm not just going to use it and put it back, you know. But he was laughing at me. The lighting is just so much brighter. I mean, I have two very bright lights um, that are shining right now. But sometimes just different angles. Um, you see different things and I'm not sure if I totally just like blanked on it or 
just like that one there <laughs> or if I thought that I you know if I did go over it but it wasn't enough so I'm using the yellow ochre over top we're just doing our circles just blending these in and we're gonna have to move down here and then we'll start working our way down to the heel in the spike this is the pink again now this really is just making almost a, like a pale vermilion but it's not quite as orange you know you got your orangey color but it's not quite as orange as the pale vermilion so it's a nice subtle thing we have some differences some variations inside of this shine as well so we'll come back through with our pale vermilion and we'll create our nice shines And we're just layering right now. You're not burnishing. Don't get crazy on, on your pressure. Just add a little bit at a time. You know, sometimes at this point, you know, I'm so close to finishing that I get excited and I want to press real hard. I know sometimes I also, if I have a bad reference photo that I can't really see, I kind of tend to be a little bit more heavy handed. I think art has really, really opened my eyes to some of the stuff that I didn't realize that I was doing until I started videotaping myself and watching what I was doing. And that's how I found out the whole like pencil spin. I didn't know that I was even doing that. I didn't know that that was a technique. It was just something that I did naturally. Um, which I found kind of strange, honestly. I just thought everybody did that when they drew, and they do, but it's just so funny because I didn't think that it was anything special, but it really is. It helps a lot. We're starting to get that nice shine. I think our shoe is really turning out really well. Now every month the colored pencil picker comes out with a new challenge so I think that's what I will base my um, my videos off of. So if you don't have it, um, go grab it. It's free. I mean it has ads and stuff. If you want to buy the pro version you don't have to but you can and it doesn't have the ads and it doesn't have, you know, you have the third color to help you pick. A lot of people say it's garbage but you know it really helped me when I first started um, there are some colors that I'm using in this too that the color pencil picker app is not really saying to use so um, once you get to know your colors you'll start seeing things differently so I think I'm liking that already. I'm going to add a little peach to it, I think, just to not burnish it, but to sort of blend them together a little bit better. It's a nice mid tone that kind of neutralizes. Okay, so now we have to go back down to this area. And we've got our Crimson Lake. We're gonna get our Tuscan Red. Or no, our Crimson Red, not Tuscan, or not ugh, Crimson Lake. We're gonna probably use black. Um, maybe peach. And then we have our Terracotta too. All right, <clears throat> so let's start with our, we're gonna do Oh, I have that Tuscan in there, huh? Let's do Terracotta. Terracotta is not quite as dark as that, so we're just going to come in here with the Terracotta. Um, because it's slightly brighter, 
So I'm just going to lightly add that. And you want to be careful too because we have our lines down to guide us and you don't want to you don't want to lose them and you don't want to um, get the shape wrong either. So let's move it up here. We're going to add more in that as well. I just wanted to start down this way and then we'll work our way from the top down. Okay, so get your crimson red and we're going to work on this. Go over top of all the areas that you just did. Use your small circles so that you can blend that terracotta in to the crimson red. I had to look at it. No shame in that, right? Sometimes you use so many different colors on one piece that you forget what you're even holding. I know I have trouble all leaking be like videotaping and I forget what color I have in my hand I just start seeing the colors that I need and not understanding <laughs> what the the color it is that I have so you just start seeing in sh you know shades of red rather than what the what the name is names of red chickens are outside. I have chickens. I have a small farm and my chickens are usually by the window yelling whenever I'm videotaping so I'm surprised they're not over here because it is a nice day today. Let's take our Tuscan here. Tuscan red. We're just going to deepen this up a little bit, this shine. I'm going to round it out a little bit better too. This Tuscan kind of comes all the way up around. This is that deeper tone. It doesn't seem like the Tuscan likes to really blend very well. It wants to, I don't want to say chunk up, but it just kind of wants to be its own color. Let's do some Crimson Lake. It's pretty close to that Tuscan and it's a little bit more red. And it comes all the way around to the heel. And then it moves up. Let's see, this is all dark too. And it's funny because you might see, before you start coloring, I know whenever I started coloring, I really honestly was like, oh, well that's just red with white on top of it uh, for the shine. And you know, honestly, once I started coloring uh, with colored pencils, the amount of colors that's in a piece is just so impressive. Um, I've used entire boxes of colors just to get the look that I want with mixing and layering and it really does make a difference when you instead of just adding white on top that you you know mix your colors and make them um, make them more realistic I'm gonna add this in here too and then This is the Crimson Lake, and then we're going to come on top of it with the Crimson Red. 
get it a little bit of a deeper red here. Do your small circles. Try to avoid, sometimes it's hard to avoid that back and forth motion. I mean, obviously sometimes you can't get away from it because you're working in such a small area that it's like the only motion that you can get. And that makes sense too. And then we're going to start the trek this way. We've got, we're going to do terracotta. The colored pencil picker app is saying to use Tuscan red, but it is definitely not, um, it's not wanting to blend very well. So what is this color? What's it saying? Uh, we're just going to do this. This is the terracotta. So we're going to go up the back of the heel. So take your terracotta and we're just going to follow this up this way. And it sort of like has, this stays the same, but there's like the, the thickness of this stays the same, but there is a change in color here. So it looks kind of funny, but work past that. And you're just gonna work your way up. Now, it has a lot of different changes here. So be mindful of those and all the shapes. It is super weird, and I'll agree with you on that because it kind of curls in here and then it curls back up there so use your peach and we're gonna work on this we're just gonna color this in it's a little bit shiny so that's why we're making it peach blend this little area right here in We don't want those lines, so get the terracotta back out. And we're gonna blend this terracotta into those peach that the peach that we just drew. So very lightly, we want to get those lines to disappear. So follow with your terracotta over all the peach and then go back through with the peach again. See how it kind of made that line disappear and now it's just one solid color. Um, rather than the lines. We don't want the lines. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we're going to come in with, I want to come in with just a little bit of the crimson red. And we're just going to add a touch of it in here just to give it that nice red tint. We're not going to go crazy overboard though. That part of the paper took in lots of color. Now once you get that on, blend it out a little bit more with your peach on this part of the inside of the shoe. Okay. Also, if you would like, um, just kind of thinking of this, I picked the Bristol Smooth because I thought that it would be probably more accessible to everybody. I know pastel mat's kind of a special order. This is terracotta, by the way. I'm just sort of blending this out. But if it is something that you want me to do with a picture, I am totally fine with doing that. Or if there's another piece, kind of paper that you would like me to try um, to do another a piece on, I would love to. Um, work with you if you don't know how to use something if you want to learn how to use something 
that's why I'm doing these because I know I would look online and I'd only find like the paid ones which I do have a patreon but um, sometimes it's not always uh, economical for people you know to they want to learn you know how to create and this is black and I'm just going through here but it's not always the best route now I'm still gonna keep my patreon I'm still gonna offer larger tutorials for people and it is only five dollars a month but it's not always the best uh, way for people I, I know I always was trying to find someone that would teach me something just anything really if they could so that is why I'm doing this I'd like to help people with what I know and then later if you decide that you'd like to go to the patreon it'll be there so no worries okay I'm just following this up basically on the inside of the shoe it is very dark in there so we want to just add a little bit of this black and then with the light peach I'm gonna go into here and it's gonna be pretty close to burnishing because that red is so deep and we're just gonna add this light peach and we're gonna go all the way down And it gives it this nice pinky kind of look rather than just white now the white would do the same thing but I like it that it's peach or light peach because it gives it that look without being white and then we can also do it to this one light peach right in here and then get out your crimson lake and let's darken it up just a little bit in here a crimson red and this is like black in here but we're gonna we're not gonna worry about that I don't think um, uh, maybe we're gonna start it with let's do the crimson lake and we're gonna overlay it with some black because you've got like a thin line of this red through here so this crimson lake kind of comes out in here so if you get super detailed with your um, with your drawing if you if you're like you know getting every single detail in there when you put your base layer down that's totally fine I usually just kind of give a rough estimate of like the shape and then where the shines mostly are so um, yeah <clears throat> so I might add here or subtract there or something like that so now I have the crimson red and I'm going to start to work on this part we're going to work our way down and connect this is a very um, this area here there's a shape right here if you're looking at the heel and it's shiny but then it kind of like fades really really well so we don't want to do like really heavy work right here we're going to fade it do your small circles again this is also going to be um, darker so we're gonna add not just the crimson red but we're gonna put the other darker reds in there as well because this is really bright and then this is really dark so do your small circles
let's add some Crimson Lake just to deepen it up a little bit. There's a pretty hard contrast here. Like a pretty like hard line. So it's okay to get a little, I mean, we don't want to do a hard line, but it's a pretty stark contrast of light and dark. And if you look close enough, the edges aren't straight. Oops. starting to get up into the heel here. And you know, I think I'm just going to go ahead with this crimson lake and we're going to continue this up here. Now be careful too, because you might get more of a blunt tip and you might ruin some shapes here like I just did okay and there's that gray area that I was talking about so if you have let's grab the hmm, what does it look like to me I was thinking French gray I have a 70 I'm going to do the French Gray 30 first. So the French Gray 30, we're going to start it up here. We're going to work our way down through here. And then I'm also going to come back with the 70, French Gray 70. And then we're going to get our black and we're going to crisp these lines a little bit. I'm going to go on top of it and just make that gray line a little bit less thick. To see how that looks like a shine of a shoe rather than just white. It looks nice. I really like it. Okay, so now that we have that done, we can start working down the back of the heel and we're going to add some more of our, our tonal differences in here. So, let's see, get your crimson red, maybe. Let's do the Crimson Lake here. I'm going to come up around here a little bit and look at your shapes. And then this is a lot brighter on this side. So this is the Crimson Lake. And we're just going to color that in right here. Now in between, there's a little bit of some tonal differences in between. So why don't we add we're just going to add a little bit, like a line here, just a little bit, okay? So then get back to your crimson red, and we're going to keep adding this in. And using your small circles. Gonna travel up the back of the heel. And work down. Now 
Now, now that I have that, I'm going to take the crimson red here that I have, and I am going to, let's see, we're missing some shapes in here. We've got a shape that comes in this way. But now there's some tonal differences in here. And what I mean by that is there's just like a little bit of a subtle change in these, this color that makes it look shiny, like a reflection almost. So you want to pay attention to that because they are so subtle that you might miss them. Okay, so if you're looking really close, at the top of this there is a line and it almost follows nearly the whole way to the top here. So we're going to go like this. I'm just going to come down around here. We're going to follow it down. And then it kind of widens out a little bit. And then we have a shape. Kind of goes like this. Okay. But then you don't want to miss too because on the top of this line is like a peach color just like this. So we're going to follow this out, make this a little bit thicker. And then we're going to bring it up here. There's another little bit of a shape here. And then we're going to follow it all the way down to where it meets this. Okay. Now if you're looking, there's also another shape that's right in here that's this red color. And we want those because then that makes it look more shiny. It's more um, believable that what you're drawing is shine. I'm going to put a little bit of a shape here too. Okay, so now we have that and I'm going to come back through with my peach and I'm going to run along the top of this line that we just did. Okay. And then we can take our uh, crimson red again and then we can just bolden up these shapes a little bit more. You can even go back over them to make sure that you got them as bold as you would like them. Okay, and now there's some tonal differences, some changes in here. So where this little shape is here, we're going to come up just a little bit and we're still working with our crimson red, make sure you have a sharp tip. And we're just going to very gently and lightly, we're going to add some of these tones in here, some of these, um, some of these shapes. So we're just going to follow this up very lightly do not press hard <clears throat> and it goes up like this if you look close enough you can see it and it's not that bright honestly and then it goes like that and then we have some changes over here and it's it's like the it's the crimson red but it's like a little less intense And we're just going to add that in there, maybe make this part right here a little bit darker. And then you can actually come back in with some of your peach and very gently blend it just so that it's not so noticeable. actually take our white and then let's move it along the edge here. I'm going to do some small circles but I'm just going to follow it so far and then we'll put some up here too. And this is definitely on the side of burnishing. Just to add those subtle changes in color we just want a little bit. Okay. Let's, I'm looking
looking around now just to make sure. We've got a little bit, let's get our light peach. We have a little bit of a subtle change that's here. So get your light peach and we're just going to draw a little bit of a change here in this tone. And it's a, it's a little bit of a shape too, so if it kind of hooks around like a needle almost, like a sewing needle. And then, let's see. So let's do our pink and grab your pale vermilion. We'll start working on this and then we'll darken up some of these other areas. So start with your pink, you know, work from the top, kind of go down. It's okay if you go over top of that darker spot that we drew earlier because it's just going to layer over it. As long as you're not pushing hard and burnishing real hard, it should be fine. And then get your pale vermilion. Let's blend a little bit. And turn it that nice orangey look like down below. And I'm going to try to avoid this area a little bit. Um, we'll add a little bit of the pale vermilion, but I'm going to avoid it just because I know I have to blend it and I don't want too many layers because then it'll get muddy. Now if you don't know what muddy means, or if you've never experienced muddy, I will tell you that um, it's too many layers and once you start seeing it you realize oh that's muddy and a lot of times you can fix it but sometimes you can't so it's always easier to add than it is to subtract um, color there's a couple different ways the one that I am most familiar with is the tape method if you make a mistake you take a piece of scotch tape and you put it on and you can take, I have this, this is my Fiskars, um, it's just like an embossing tool and you put the tape down and you kind of rub in the spot where you want it to pull up and it'll pull it right up. But if you're not, if you're a heavy handed, if you're a heavy hander artist, um, sometimes if you're not careful you can actually ruin the tooth of the paper and then you have a lot harder of a time because you'll be pulling it up and you already have like some of these areas that are messed up and pushed in from drawing so hard. So that's why you want to keep it light just in case you mess up and you have to pull up you know, some of this color. You don't want to push real hard. So I have the crimson red again. I'm just sort of adding it, blending all this stuff out. And if you're not quite sure, how, if you do mess up and you don't really know how to do like the taping method, now I do also have my erasers, you know, my kneaded eraser and, and all that. Um, sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes I can't get it to really pick up so I mean the taping method is not hard but if you need a video on that I'm more than willing to do that I know I was confused when I first started using the taping method I was almost like balling it up because I didn't know how to work it and then I got an embossing tool for whiskers I have Crimson Lake sorry um, I used I had the embossing tool. I was like, oh, I'll use this for my whiskers. And, like, I actually use it a lot more for the taping method than I do for whiskers. So, it was quite a, a game changer. I thought I, I thought I found something new. <laughs> but I did not. And I messaged my friend who also does these. Uh, she also colors and, you know, draws for, for fun and for a living. And, um, she's like, oh yeah, that's, that's how you do it. And I was so confused. I'm like, why didn't anybody tell me this? Like, why, why didn't I know about this? So if you don't know how to do it, 
message me. I'll show you. I'll, I'll make you a video. Okay, so this is the Tuscan Red, and I'm just darkening up this area a little bit more because it's too close to this. This is a lot darker up here than this shine. And again, the Tuscan Red just seems to not to want to stick to any other color than its other than itself. So like I said, Prisma colors are, are fabulous and this paper is really fabulous, but sometimes, just sometimes, there's those colors that just don't seem to want to work the way that they should. And I don't know if that's a just like a Prisma color problem, but I haven't experienced that really with the other pencils that I do use. So there, I just want to add a little bit of contrast here. And these are all really, really dark over here too. This is very dark, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to go a little bit harder with my Tuscan red here just to give it that nice deep red look. I'm looking for any tonal differences. It looks like this kind of just is a difference here and it just kind of comes down around like that and that's a lot brighter. And we are almost done. We're definitely over halfway. So this is fabulous. This is the first time I've done a shoe. So I'm kind of excited about that. I think it looks great for my first time. Make sure that you share this. If you are on the Facebook group where I'm posting this, make sure you share what you create because that's always fun to see what everybody else um, has created. I'm just using pink now. I'm just kind of pushing through a little bit of this. I'm going to add a little bit more of the um, yellow ochre to this side up here. back side. I think I'm going to go with some peach um, and probably go over it with the red, the crimson red. So let's do some peach, bring it in around here because this is a shiny spot. Sometimes too, you got to be careful with the black and these light colors with the Prisma colors. They seem so soft that a lot of times, like if you're going back and forth, it will grab some of that black. So if you do not want that color in there, you got to be very careful. Sometimes I'll even do a stroke, wipe off my pencil, do a stroke, wipe off my pencil. So let's add a little pink in this too. All right, and then get your crimson red. Very lightly, because we're gonna go back over top of it with our peach, just to blend it out a little bit. Okay, and get your peach. So let's start the spike, the heel. So I'm going to start in. Um, I'm going to start in this area, 
I'm going to start with our terracotta just because it's a little bit darker and you want to watch too because in here we've got this kind of comes up this way and then there is a definite like crease here so you can even go ahead and sort of map out where you want your color so let me see I lost a little bit of my lines here so I'm just gonna very gently add to it so I'm very lightly just going over top of these lines I hope you can see them more for your benefit I want to make sure that you can see my lines so that when you're drawing you know where you're at okay and then as we go down So let's start with our, I'm going to start here I think instead. Let's do some Tuscan red in here because then we'll do some black and then it'll kind of bring us up to the heel. So. So follow with your Tuscan Red. I'm going to come up in here. I'm going to make sure we have that nice dark crease and you can press a little bit on this one. Okay. <clears throat> and then this is dark in here. So we have a light area down here and then this area is dark. So watch your shapes. Don't get too carried away with your darks. And then it comes around like this and we have that lighter shine there. A lot of this looks like it's pretty dark. We've got, yeah, we'll do our Tuscan See, the Tuscan seems to go on really well by itself. And then when you start adding other colors, like if you go over top of it with another color, it seems to not want to go. So we'll put it down first. And we'll take it all the way down to the tip. And then let's follow this up on the right side of this area. Have some crazy shapes going on in there. and then follow that down a little bit. This isn't quite as dark on this side. So just follow that down. Okay, so get out your crimson red and let's start to blend some of this, some of that Tuscan. So we're going to put the Tuscan red over top of, or no, the, sorry, crimson red over top of the Tuscan red. Just because the Tuscan doesn't seem to want to take 
whenever it goes over top of any other color. And then let's take our terracotta and let's work on this area. Remember this is a bright area there so we want to avoid that with the terracotta. The terracotta is a lot darker um, than what it's showing in the picture. So we're just going to work this terracotta down to about here where we had our line. And then we're going to go over top of it with some crimson red. blend it out just a bit Okay, so use your terracotta again in that area. We're just going to keep layering it until it smooths out. See it chunked a little bit there. And then go back over top of it with your crimson red. on this part here let's do some peach let's get that nice bright area there and then take your black and you're going to come in under the heel where the the heel meets the heel I guess a funny way to think of it. You're just going to work your way down here. Okay. And then this area here is like it's like it's um like tucked in underneath We're going to do that and take your crimson red again and we're going to just go over top of it and make it um, not so dark, I guess. And then it comes out into this deeper um, color. So get your uh, crimson lake again. And we're going to go over top of this to get that nice dark shadow here. Okay. So now, sorry, I wanted to add a little bit here. It's a little bit. Uh, Okay, so now I have this Crimson Lake. Um, I'm going to come in here and add this a little bit. Come back through with my Crimson Red. And then we're just going to add this just to give it more shape. Just trying to get it get some of those little specks out of there. Okay. Now let's work down, we'll work our way down. It says it's all crimson red, but um, it's definitely different. So, and I can see why sometimes artists think like this app is kind of 
kind of garbage, but I, I really honestly, it helped me so much. I can't say that it's trashy because um, it really did help me whenever I couldn't find anyone else to help. It, it really helped. So I'm actually going to go through with, let me see. And I think I'm going to start with some pink. Um, it's just a little bit lighter than this than the, the crimson uh, red. So we're just gonna go in with some pink. Let's start with our small circles. And I'm just gonna add a little bit. And we're gonna go back over top of it with our crimson red. Just so that it makes it a little bit lighter. And I might actually go over top of it even more with some peach or something like that. We'll see how that works out because it's saying it's crimson red, but this is all crimson, so um, you won't see that shine if you're, you know, if it was the same. I know sometimes, too, you'll see pictures, like if you're doing a commission for a dog or a cat, it will have, like, the eyes where it's, like, super black, but you can, you can see brown in it, but it will um, tell you that, <laughs> like, nope, it's all black, so... Um, just use your judgment. You know that the eyes are brown. Add some brown, you know. I'm just going to add a little pink here just to give it more shape. Some pink. Blend in this crimson red. Then let's see on the opposite side I think we've got a lot of peach over here and terracotta so we already have terracotta down so we're gonna use that to our benefit and go all the way up like that So let's use our terracotta. And we're just gonna add a little bit down at the bottom. Kind of move our way up. And we want that line to disappear too, so we don't want it to just be a peach line with terracotta on the outside. So just add a little bit of terracotta in the middle and then use the peach. Sorry, my phone just went off. They hung up, so I don't know. <laughs> Let's add on this side, we're gonna add a little bit of peach because this is darker right here. So just a little bit of peach. Let's add a little bit of this um, this is uh, dark umber, so we're just going to add a little bit of brown, this dark umber in here. It's a little darker, but... And then we're going to go over top of it with a little bit of terracotta. We just want it a little bit deeper in there, so... And then, let's get our Tuscan red. Keep that Tuscan red going down. We'll take it all the way down to the tip. And then get your, again, your crimson red. We're going to blend that out. Just add a layer of it on top and then also across this pink area just to blend them all together. Now 
Now, of course, if you see any areas that you think need a little bit more attention, um, feel free to do that. If you're happy with what you have, definitely post it. I want to see it. If you're having trouble, um, you can message me on Facebook or tag me or something like that. And maybe I can help you fix it or if you're just struggling a little bit, that's also fine. Okay, so I have my light peach now and I'm going to add this shine that's in here. And it's kind of, let's see, okay. It's kind of a different shape here. It kind of goes up in here. This is really bright right here. So it, it blends in with the background, but I don't want it to. So I'm just going to throw in a couple of shines here. And let's get our white. And we'll do that. Okay, now let's do the bottom here. Now the bottom is black, but um, because it's black I don't want to do just black let's start with our dark umber we'll come over top of it with the black so um, let's work out let's work out the shape here this is our dark umber and I'm just gonna very lightly we're gonna add we're gonna add that color the dark umber we're going to make a slight layer here. And then on top of it, if you need to sharpen your black, do it. What you're going to do with this is we're going to add it, but we're going to skip over some areas so that that brown shows through. Okay, so let's go back through with our dark umber. And you can't really tell, like when it's side by side, I mean, you can't, after you get it all colored in and the graininess has gone, you can't really tell. But I will say it does add to it. You might think it's pointless if you can't really tell, but it isn't. Um, it is a good thing to have different different values in there and different colors. And on that back side, you know, there's not much of a change in the color, but I'm going to use the French Gray 70%. And since it's like brighter over here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of that there. And then I'm gonna come back through with my dark umber and we're just going to fade it just a little bit. Now in the picture, it doesn't have a shadow underneath it, so I'm not going to add that. <clears throat> this was actually a joy. I, I'm not really used to drawing things that aren't animals. So if you've enjoyed this, please like, please subscribe, um, comment, uh, anything that you wanna do. And um, I will be making these once a month, so hopefully you enjoyed this one, and I hope that you learned a lot. So. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next month.